right, so next I wanted to go over the DIY products and how they compare to the professional products. So as you can see, I took a trip to Bunnings recently, and apart from some interesting looks that I was given, I did find some interesting products that we could look at. So if we start in the same fashion, uh, we can look at the gel bait first. So I found a fipronil-based gel, uh, which I was actually quite surprised. It is the same active ingredient and the same level of active ingredient in 0.5 grams per kilogram. I can't fault the product, given that I haven't even used it but I can say that it's very similar to what we use. But as I mentioned in the previous video, it is only effective generally if there is an infestation. So if you're not having a current problem or if it is more of your larger cockroaches, I wouldn't recommend the gel as your first go-to, but it can certainly be one you could use. Now, the other bait I did find is the one that I find in nearly every kitchen that I go to, uh, which is your little packaged baits. This active ingredient in Doxicarb is also another active ingredient that we use and can be really effective and really safe. Hard to fault it given that I haven't used this product either uh, and given that it's got a good active ingredient. Uh, what I will say is it does say that the product will only last about three months and if you do have a German infestation it's saying you're going to need to use the whole product uh, in one hit um, and given the size of a kitchen it probably you would need more than one box to do that as well. So if we move on to liquid insecticide sprays, uh, the two that I've picked are more of your premix. So you can see you just need to take the lid off and you've got it ready to go, uh, which is the way that I would recommend to do it as DIY. Uh, it's so much easier to have it ready to go and generally safer. Of course, you can buy the concentrate and you could mix it up as well if you want to. Now, what I found is there was a whole range of products uh, with liquid insecticide and they were typically all the same active ingredient, which is your bifenthrin. Now, bifenthrin's been around a really long time and it is a really effective product. As you may have noticed with our professional products is I didn't pick any bifenthrins to use internally. Uh, we found other products that can be much more effective. Um, and I bring it back to over time, cockroaches can build immunity. And so when it comes to an infestation, found bifenthrin less effective than other products. So if we move on to aerosol sprays, I think there's a few factors. As I mentioned, the type of active ingredient in it is a factor. Uh, but I think the big one is really just the way it's made and how well you can spray it. So this one is going to be, it says a crawling insect killer, but really the way it's designed, you're not going to be getting into cracks and crevices. This to me looks like more of a, a space spray uh, if you were spraying for flies. So to me, I wouldn't recommend that design. This one is getting better. It's got more of a, a nozzle where you could get into areas. And similarly with this one, it looks super fancy. But um, really, um, you know, usability in trying to get into those small areas is a little tricky. So if you can get a product like this one where it's got the nozzle, then you can more effectively get into those hard to reach places. Uh, because really with aerosols, they can often be quite fumy, quite smelly. Uh, and so we want to use a small amount as possible. Um, and the more isolated, more targeted we can be with the nozzles, uh, the less we have to use and the less smell we, we've got going on. Uh, and then of course, we've got the cockroach traps as well. So um, these also uh, indicate that they have a lure attractant, not a chemical, and they're a sticky board. Um, again, they could be similar, but really if you're at that level where you've got that infestation and need these, um, we probably need to be looking at a bit more than just monitoring boards. And as you can see, there is no dust that, that I could find that would be effective. You can get different dusts that may be able to be used in the kitchen areas, but we don't use dust in the kitchen. There's just a high risk of contamination. As you can appreciate, dust can travel around, at least with uh, aerosols or liquid sprays, it's going to be applied, it's going to bond to that surface and stay put. Uh, with dust, you put on hinges or cupboards, you have it floating around in the air, it's going to settle on things like cutlery plates, uh, those sorts of things. And to me, that's, that's increasing the risk of contamination. So we avoid dust wherever possible in those areas. It's not to say it can't be done, uh, but there is an art to it um, and we prefer not to. Uh, and that's why we stick to things like the permethrin dust in the roof void and the wall cavities. Alrighty, so what do we learn? How do the DIY products compare to professional products? So if we start back at the gels, I would say that this particular gel is is fairly on par with one of the products that we use, although only having one type does make it fairly limited. I'm not sure if I would waste too much time with those ones. I think when it comes to the insecticide sprays, there is definitely much better products than bifenthrin out there, but ultimately it depends on the level of infestation, and if we're applying the product well in the right areas, then it could still be quite effective. With the aerosols, uh, I think again, uh, similar active ingredients can mean that they're quite effective, 
but we really want to look at how well the actual aerosol is made up. Monitoring boards, well look, I wouldn't waste too much time on those anyway, either way. Lastly, but not least, the Dust Air Professional products are the clear winner on that one. So now that we know how some of the products can work or not work as effectively, why don't we get into how to apply the products. Hi guys, hope you're enjoying the DIY series. If you are, it would mean a lot to us if you can give us a like and consider subscribing to our YouTube channel. We make content here every week. Cheers guys.